Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, I'm going to show you the concept of stacking effects and using the effects control panel in Adobe Premiere. So whenever you have a clip on the timeline and you click and highlight it and make it active, you can tell it's active by this white outline, and this should also open the effect controls panel. If you don't see this window, you can always go to window, make sure effect controls is checked on, and put it wherever you want. But in the effect controls panel is where you have all of your default video effects, which are the motion and opacity. So this is like the position, scale, the masking options. However, whenever you add an effect from the effects panel, which is on the right hand side in a tab usually, again, if you don't see this, you can always go to window and find that in the effects panel. But whenever you add a video effect, let's say something like a mirror effect, you should see it pop up in the effect controls panel and that's where you can adjust all the parameters about it. So this is all basic information that you might already know. But let's say I do have an effect on my clip and then I add another effect. So in this case, let's add a distort effect. So I'll add a twirl as well. And now I have two effects on this clip. I have the mirror and the distort. However, whenever you're stacking multiple effects, the order of operation kind of matters, just like math. So in this case, first the mirror is getting applied and then the twirl. But if I was to take this effect, I can actually drag these around. So I can put the twirl first and then the mirror. And you notice that gives us a different result because they're being applied in order. Not only that, but you can stack the same effect multiple times so let's say I have an invert effect. I throw an invert on top of this. Uh, let's say inverting the green channel and then I duplicate that. So I'll copy and paste it and then invert something else like the blue or the hue. This is going to give me a different look than if I had it the other way around. You'll notice that is a different look. So you can achieve interesting effects by stacking two effects that you wouldn't normally be able to stack on top of each other. And whenever you're in this panel, you can also turn off effects. So you can toggle an effect, see what it might look like with or without. And you can also copy and paste and stack effects and adjust them a little bit. So um, let's say one mirror, let's say I want to add a whole nother mirror. I can add a whole nother mirror and kind of get this kaleidoscopic type of effect. Now some effects, it doesn't really matter which order you put them in, like the color is going to be the color whether the mirror is applied first or after. It just kind of makes sense that way since it's not distorting the pixels. But you get the idea that you can stack all these effects and you can even stack one effect multiple times to really get an endless amount of combinations. Another thing you can do is adjustment layers. So if you make sure you have your project panel highlighted where all your clips are and go to file new adjustment layer. This will give you a blank adjustment layer that you can put over top on any track of several clips at once. So let's say there's a whole bunch of cuts and I wanted to add a blur or a color effect on everything at once. Then I can do that using this adjustment layer instead of having to apply it on each clip. So let's say, let's just say, I'll, I don't know, I'll add a mosaic effect. This will add this mosaic effect onto everything that's underneath. So whether it's just one clip or multiple clips, like even a clip and text. So in this case, if I put this text layer under the adjustment layer, you'll see it's now being affected by the adjustment layer. So you can really have whatever you want going on underneath and then the adjustment layer will work. There are some sorts of things that the order of operation might not work how you expect. For example, if I increase the scale of an adjustment layer, that doesn't actually change the scale of the things underneath it. That simply changes the scale of the adjustment layer. So you do have to keep that in mind. If you did want to do something like that, you could use the transform effect and you could use transform to increase the scale because this is actually an effect being applied and it's not the default video effects. Another really important way that you can blend and combine effects is by using the masking options. So under every single effect in the effect controls panel, 
you'll see this circle, square, and pen tool, which are the masking options. So if I do something like create a, a four point polygon mask on this invert effect, you'll see in the program window, if I highlight this mask one, I've created a mask only on this part of the effect. Now it's getting mirrored because of the order of operations that we've done here. So that does matter to the color, but I can also feather this mask. I can do other things to this mask. And it's a cool way to only apply an effect on a certain portion of a clip. So not only do you have the path of the mask, you can animate this with keyframes, but you also have the opacity. So if I only wanted this mask to be, you know, 50% strong, I can do that as well. So this is what it looked like just for a better example, just this invert effect being masked. It's pretty cool. You can do only this part of the clip being affected. And don't forget, you can also mask the entire adjustment layer if you're working with adjustment layers under the opacity section of the adjustment layer. So I can have multiple uh, effects on an adjustment layer and only apply them onto a certain portion of a clip. There's also the concept of source and clip effects. So for example, this is, I have applied all these effects, the twirl and the invert and the mirror on this instance of the clip. If I was to drag this same clip out from the project media bin again, I now have two different clips. One of them has all these effects on it and one of them is still the original clip. And I can have different instances of the same clip over and over and over. And each of them would have their own effect controls. You can also see this in the timeline by this FX badge. When it's green or yellow or purple, that means you know there's adjustments either on the audio or the video effects. And when it's gray, that means there is no effects on there. But in the effect controls panel, you can actually switch over right here on this tab. It's kind of like an internet window or tab. You can click source and you can apply effects onto the source as well. So let's say I add a black and white effect onto the source clip. Now the source clip is going to be black and white first, and then everything else is going to be applied. So all of the other effects that we've put, so the inverts and whatnot, are going to be there. And you know this because this red underline is now on the effects badge of the clip. So now if I had this same clip cut up in different pieces, I'm still at least going to have that black and white. And then if on different instances of that same clip, I did want to add other things, then I can do that on a clip by clip basis, like a blur or whatever. But if I wanted just to add a effect on every single instance of the clip, you'll also see that if that change being reflected in the project media bin. So you can stack effects in the effect controls panel. You can put source effects on them that will alter sort of like the original clip, no matter how many times you drag it out. You can rearrange and copy and paste and stack effects, the same effects and get, do different settings on them. And you can also use adjustment layers to, to apply effects onto multiple clips underneath. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, this has been some tips on effects and stacking effects and combining them. You can check out my channel for dozens of more ideas and tutorials on different unique effects and subscribe to stay tuned for all my future videos. My name is Justin Odisho. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.